It's not enough to just say, I want to be a millionaire, but what do, how do you plan to get this money? <laughs> what do you plan to do? You know, having a desire without a plan is just a wish. Hey friend, welcome to my channel, Karina Lude Mental Gems. This channel is dedicated to leveling up in every area of your life. So let us learn together, read together, but most importantly, grow together. Now let's get into this video. Today is a book club, the book Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, which was a read. <laughs> uh, it's a very transformative book. So Paul Miners, the website, did a very good breakdown of this book and the key points because it is very lengthy. I have some of my own notes and I will be getting the summary from Paul Miners also, which I will be putting the link in the description for you guys if you're interested. Despite the book's title, it is not all about just getting rich, okay? Despite the title. Yes, that aspect is on there, but it is like a growth book that focuses on the mentality more than anything else. For you guys who don't know who Napoleon Hill is, Napoleon Hill was an American author in the area of the New Thought Movement, who was one of the earliest producers of the modern genre of personal success literature. He is considered to be one of the great writers on success. His books typically focuses on the power of personal beliefs and the role they play in personal success. And he was also an advisor to President Franklin D. Roosevelt from 1933 to 19. 36. Think and Grow Rich, originally written in 1937, is one of the most best-selling books of all times, and it's a psychological book to richness. One of the first things that he talks about in the book is desire. For example, he asks a reader to ask yourself, what do you really want? Ask yourself that right now. What do you really want? Do you want a better job? Do you want to succeed further in your career that you're in now? What do you really want? If it's a job that you want, for example, you have to shift your focus from saying, how do I get a job? To what can I give a job? What can I provide? How am I an asset? And I know with this generation, even with silly topics like what do you bring to the table, etc., a lot of people like to feel like they were just born great. <laughs> and any job or any career should be happy to have them in their possession without really being able to provide much to that career or job or that institution. You have to ask yourself, what can I give to this company? Even within the job you're in now, it's not enough to just desire a raise or a promotion, but what can you provide to get this promotion or this raise? What sets you out from everyone else? Once we start asking these internal questions, then you start to change the shift in your mind into somebody that subconsciously will want to grow more productive, if that makes sense. So Napoleon provides the mindsets for five key areas of desire. So the first is career. Going from what do I get to how will I grow requires shifting from ego-driven concerns like title, salary, benefits, etc., to growth opportunities within the company and position. So going from you wanting this career or you wanting to get into this business, maybe it's podcasting or YouTubing, or maybe you want to become a doctor, etc. But what's driving you is the title, the money, and that's that, the respect that you will get, the fame, and it's not really how can I grow within this? How is this going to make me grow? It's different when you have the desire to be a doctor and you want to be a doctor because you're thinking of all the people that you could help. Maybe you want to be an optometrist and you want to cure blindness. I used to want to be an optometrist originally when I was in school because I wear glasses for those who don't know and I wear contacts, I don't have them now, but I typically, don't like wearing my contacts, but I was obsessed with, you know, eyes and just potentially curing blindness one day. Cause I just could not imagine what it must be like to lose your vision completely. My vision's already weak and I've done things to kind of make my vision better naturally. But once you have those types, if you have a motivation that's, Hey, I want to cure blindness. It, it makes you a better person to seek that position. But for me and my beliefs, God, takes your desires when it is good things. He does not withhold good things for us. If there is the ego is removed from it, then you will always succeed. If I can give an example for my life and you guys, I love reading your comments and you give examples to these book clubs with your life. So give an example in your life when you have entered into a career, maybe it wasn't your dream job. It wasn't your dream career or it's not what you thought you were always going to do, but then you stumbled upon it. And then instead of just working and going in, getting a check or getting the 
title, you actually use that position to help others or your motivation to succeed in that position is no longer just about you and it's not ego driven. It's about the people you're helping and then you just see that you naturally just is blessed in that position and you grow naturally. Even if it's not monetarily, the growth is internally and it's spiritually you know it's mentally that you see this position has made me a better person like god has the universe conspired to make you succeed when your motivation for getting into a career exceeds your own ego in the financial company that i was working in i did credit repair for clients financial advising also where i would help them clear their clear their credits to purchase homes or purchase cars within my community there's a lot i'm an immigrant i'm haitian and so there's a we just don't understand credit like that. It was not something that we understand. It's not something that we just understood because the credit system is something new to Haitians coming from Haiti, you know? A lot of the elderly that would come that finally wants to get a home, they've been working, they have the money, but they don't understand credit. They don't understand inquiries. They don't understand none of these dynamics. It, I was so passionate in teaching them about not just clearing your credit, not just helping you to get this house, but let me teach you on how to, to use the credit system for your benefit, how to avoid ever going into collections again, or how to avoid having these inquiries on for long term. It became such, it beyond me. I just like seeing my community grow in advance because in the office that I worked with is a financial office. So they did bookkeeping for other companies and they did taxes and all of those things, amendments. Everyone that was working there did, and I know it sounds cliche to say that, but they did have a genuine passion in helping the community. And which is why, you know, by the IRS, 3D Financial was rated with an A plus, five stars. The whole time that I was working there, it was, and still even after I've left the company to, you know, do this full time, they're still rated five star. It's genuine need to care for the people and you naturally just succeed. I was getting clients just naturally, more than I could even handle on my own, where I would need help, you know, assistance. Hey, we need to hire more people because when you're doing things that goes beyond the title or what you're doing for people, you know, at first my motivation to work was to make money but then when I saw the need for my people to be educated on this it changed completely you know so I love that he put that in a book because a lot of people bought this book and purchased it for the ego driven I want to become rich I want to be respected I want to you know whatever your motivations may be and from the very beginning he lets you know that listen no that's not what makes success you have to have motivations that go beyond the ego comment below what you guys think about that next is leading to lead first you need to follow and learn from existing leaders how would it affect your career if you became an apprentice to someone at the top of your field that you admire so i love that he focused on leading a lot because for you to become a great leader you must know how to first be a follower and a lot of people don't know how to follow they want to lead 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 be in the head but how can you lead a group of people if you were not once a follower and a good follower who aspires to be a great leader looks at leaders that they would want to become whether it be for me i love biblical leaders i looked at joseph i looked at um, moses for example even david how they ruled their people at the time their wisdom solomon you look at things like that if you're more into bible scholars and then you look through leaders of the past that were actually great that weren't tyrants you know but even then i do i have videos here i just recently did one about two weeks ago or a week ago on learning from tyrants. How do they manipulate people, you know? And to avoid getting manipulated yourself, like the book 48 Laws of Power from Robert Greene, I did a breakdown for that book also. You can learn from other leaders, not just on how to be a great leader, but how to avoid the pitfalls that they fell into and how to avoid being manipulated by leaders and how to avoid being a manipulative leader yourself. There's no limit to what you can learn from just following people being quiet and being patient you know everyone who learned any craft some people are born with talent and skills naturally they're child prodigies they're just brilliant they can play by ear i have so many friends that know how to play music just by ear that never learned music never went to school and they're out playing people that went to juilliard that happened. There are people that are just naturally gifted, but many people aren't. And there are skills that you do, like nobody's just born knowing how to file their taxes. <laughs> nobody's just born knowing how to clear their credit once it's 
and shambles, right? Those are things you learn. And oftentimes you learn from someone else who knew how to do it. You have to humble yourself. There's an ego check that you have to do to learn from others, okay? Even in watching videos on YouTube, you're watching this video or you're going to watch another video someone makes. Whether you like the person or not, whether you like the way their head is shaped or how their voice sounds, if there's something, uh, information that they're giving you that you know no one else is talking about and I can learn from this, there's an ego that you must die to self first and be like, let me get what this person is saying because this is valid information. And that is a form of being a humble follower. So the apostles, if you want to go deeper in, in the spiritual sense, they followed Christ. You know, his disciples followed him around and he taught them for the years that he was here to when he left, they all became leaders. They went out and became leaders and spread the gospel. But first they had to follow and be students and be disciples. This is why we go to school. This is why we go to college. We don't know everything. And we have to, the more you know that you don't know <laughs> the more you will know okay the more you humble yourself and realize you don't have infinite knowledge and that someone will always be more aware of something than you are or have more knowledge in a specific area we're all ignorant by design we don't know everything okay and the quicker you know that the more you'll be able to succeed in life the next is money this is a series of steps that the author suggests for money based desires i like this that he says be definite as to the amount of money or type of job that you want don't just say i want to be a millionaire in life okay but be specific how much millions do you want you say i want to have an infinite amount of money there are billionaires when you hear their testimony that they said ever since I was little I said I would want money so much that I don't know how to count and there are people that generally like ah that kind of money scare me I don't want to fall into corruption I don't need that much and the responsibility that comes with having that much I might not be able to live up to Lord make me comfortable okay I want a comfortable job I want a comfortable money and to be set and there are people that's like you know I just want about a hundred million I want enough money to where I'm beyond comfortable but also I'm not super rich to where it's like a burden, you know, be very specific about what the things you not only ask God, but the goals that you have for yourself. Because if you're not specific, you won't have a sense of direction. Second is determine exactly what you intend to give in return for the money you desire. What do you intend to give? Just like with the job, what do you plan to do with this money? Aside from your family, what else do you tend to, to give? A lot of people get their money, they don't donate. And I'm not guilting to say you have to donate to charity, but you have to give back in some sense. Whenever much is given to you, much is also required, <laughs> which is why I say to be a billionaire does come with a lot of responsibilities. But what do you intend to do with that money? Do you intend to multiply it, have businesses to give employment to many other people in turn helping them with their families? Do you intend to one day be rich that when I retire, I can build several schools and hospitals, etc.? Write down plans that that align outside of the ego. Next is establish a definite date when you intend to attain the money that you desire. And next is create a definite plan for carrying out your desire and begin at once. It's not enough to just say, I wanna be a millionaire, but what do? how do you plan to get this money? <laughs> What do you plan to do? You know, having a desire without a plan is just a wish, a uh, wish and wishes are just with that. They're wishes. Uh, they won't come true. Yes. You know, divine grace might just make a wish come through, but that's one in a dozen. You have to work for the things that you desire. And one of the ways is to have a plan and then execute the plan. Next thing he said is to write down all of those questions that I just asked or those statements. You write down all your answers, how much money you want, what you plan to do with it, how do you plan to give back, etc. blah, 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 the date. And then you read that often. You read it daily, daily to yourself. It's like your mantra. This is my desires. This is what I plan to do with the desires. This is how I plan to obtain the desires. You read them yourself. And I might add on a tip with this, that if you are a spiritual person or whatever you believe in, that always put God first, okay? And make sure that your desires align with God and that his will be done also. And that things are not just your will because that's how we can tend to come to ruin is when we're just following our desires only and not putting God first. I did want to add that. Next thing I love is that he tackled failure. It says, look for lessons within failure and examine them without the emotional attachment of why something has failed. Use failure as growth opportunities towards greater accomplishment. 
accomplishments. It's using your failures to learn from them. Like I said, learning from tyrants and their failure. <laughs> Why did it's ego? All tyrants fall because they're ego, all dictators, right? So throughout history, we've learned no matter where that ego is the fall of man. So because I've learned that throughout history, I must master my ego. I must overcome my ego, right? Learning from other people's failures. Learn from your own failures. What have you failed at? And detach your emotions from it. I love that he says that. Removing your emotions from it completely not having no feelings towards it but just being like you know what okay I know I'm sad about this I know this didn't work out for me this failed let me take the emotion out of it and write down in what ways that I felt what could I have done different how can I make sure in the future this same thing doesn't happen again but when you attach emotion to your failures, it holds you back. It holds you back and it makes you fear assessing it properly or moving forward. One thing he says is by believing in yourself, others will believe in you too, okay? You have to have the confidence and I cannot stress this enough. Confidence is so sexy, it's so attractive. Whether it's to someone you wrote a business plan out to and you want them to invest and you're presenting them to them, if you look like you're not sure of yourself even a little bit, if you don't sound sure, you don't have a plan written out, you're just all over the place, I'm gonna look at you crazy. Like, I'm, I'm gonna be polite, you know, but I'm not gonna, like, come on, you know? And you have to really be confident and believe in yourself. When you believe in yourself, others, it's just, they have to believe in you too. It's like, dang, this person must know something. You know, they have this faith. I know it's going to happen. How many of us get manipulated into all these scams in businesses because the person who presented the scam to us sounded so sure of themselves that we're like, okay, take all my money. Oh, only to find out that it was a scam because child, listen. <laughs> and I've said this in several other videos that employers seek successful, confident people who can make a positive impact. Even when you go for a job interview, they're gonna hire the person who's the most confident, who believes in themselves, okay? Third thing he focused on is auto-suggestion, which is influencing your own subconscious. And all this is, is exercising control over our decisions, feelings, and actions. Tackling your subconscious, which is self-talk, positive self-talk, okay? The subconscious is so tricky. It makes us believe things that we're not even aware of. <laughs> we're not even aware what we're doing to ourselves. So a lot of things can be undone, a lot of damages by just positive self-talk, looking in the mirror and giving yourself positive self-talk and tackling into your subconscious, controlling your emotions, having control over your emotions in here first, okay? In here first. Whenever you're feeling sad, you're feeling blue. I'm not saying to not allow yourself to feel certain feelings, but give yourself a time to be like, okay, I'm gonna feel this way for five minutes. And then you tell yourself, it's all mental. I can tackle my brain. I don't have to feel this way. If you're Christian for me, like I said, I'm always gonna give the Christian aspect of it that you you call on the name of Jesus, be like, I'm happy in the name of Jesus. I'm happy, this is temporary and I'm good, I'm good, get up kind. Do what you have to do kind. <laughs> That's how I, I talk to myself because everybody has their days and they're burnt out, they're tired and things like that. But really tackling your subconscious one way is just controlling, having self-control is major. And I have a video coming up, I'm gonna record it in the same attire and everything, okay? There's gonna be several videos like this where we're going to be talking about tackling your emotions and how you can do that, where I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth into that also. Next thing he said is specialized knowledge. And this is important because how do you get specialized knowledge? A couple examples are courses, seminars, books, industry conferences, and also working with knowledgeable people. In a sense, you're renting out their knowledge. You're renting out their knowledge. It's speaking to someone who specializes in the specific field that you want to enter into. When you go to these conferences, look for them. And even if you cannot go, okay, there's conferences I would wanna go, maybe I don't wanna travel to it. They have online conferences, okay? Okay. And you do this in every area of your life. It's not just for career opportunities. There's marital conferences, there's spiritual religious conferences, there's fitness conferences. It doesn't matter what area of interest that you have. There's a conference, there's seminars, there's courses on all of those things. And start investing in those things. I'm not saying to fall for the scam of, you know, like, you know, on social media and YouTube, etc. Everybody's always selling a course. And I'm not saying that, okay? Have some discernment wisdom with that and be intentional 
uh, save your money for things that, you know, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody is selling a course. And sometimes the course is so basic, you can find it, somebody teach you on here for free. You don't even have to spend money for these things. Just find somebody. I promise you, YouTube is a university, okay? Somebody is giving you the tips on here. You, you don't need to go pay somebody to teach you anything. You can find the answers on here within, you know, yourself, purchase a book. Like these people learn to teach you. Okay, they're teaching you because they learned from someone else. They watched the videos, they did the work, they did that, they figured it out, you know? So you have the same potential to do the same thing that they're doing and understand that, like I said, no one was born with this. So yeah, some people get the shortcuts and learn from someone, pay if you have to, but you, if you don't have the funds, you're in college, like when I was young, I didn't have the funds, I learned a lot from YouTube. I learned a lot from YouTube University that I just couldn't afford otherwise to pay for it, you know? So utilize your resources and what you have. Next is imagination. This is coming up with ideas. Every business idea, invention, etc., started with the imagination. You really can't accomplish things until you see it first. This is even biblical, like you must believe in what you see. Exercise your creativity. If your imagination, like I don't know, I can't think of stuff, I can't create, you need to exercise your creativity. And how you do that is, um, participate in activities that forces you to be creative like painting you don't have to be a great painter to paint do a sip and paint for yourself at home I do that all the time you just paint you force yourself to get creative you force yourself write poems you don't have to be a poet try just try the more you try the better you'll get at it and the more you exercise creativity in your life and creativity comes in all shapes even doing your makeup is a creative act knowing how to put those colors together blending you don't see when you first started putting your makeup how terrible you were at it and then over time you got better and better and better because of practice creativity is the same way when you constantly force your mind to think and to create and to not just copy but like create like you get a blank canvas and you're creating you're not looking at a photo and then trying to recreate but you let your mind go it becomes easier for you to have imagination to come up with business ideas, okay? Because you have to think a lot. The greatest businessmen use their mind and they're the most creative people, okay? The most successful people when you tend to talk to them are very creative. Even a Bill Gates, it's, yeah, he's in tech. You might think someone like Bill Gates is not considered creative. No, that is creation, to create, to make something better. That's a lot of imagination. You know, a lot of tech giants have that, a lot of businessmen, etc. So you have to utilize your creativity and enhance it by getting involved in different creative projects. Make the time for it. Don't see it as something uh, when I get to it, no, really make the time to be creative, guys. I, I can't stress this enough. Set the time for it. Don't neglect that. Next is organized planning. Simply hoping to succeed at your goal is not the answer. Every achievement starts with a strong desire. And no plan is perfect. When you execute your plan, you will likely experience a temporary defeat. The best way to approach defeat is to simply accept it as a signal that your plans are not sound. Rebuild your plans and keep pursuing your goals armed with the knowledge of your previous failures. Don't give up before you reach your goal because quitters do not get to see their long-term plans come to fruition. Better said than I could have. Plan, plan, plan. Repetition, 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 repetition. Learn from failures, learn from failures, learn from failures, okay? Think of the light bulb. How many times did he fail before it became? A lot of inventions came by accident. A lot of them came by trying to invent something else, but then accidentally inventing this. Wi-Fi was an accident. Trying to create something else for the military gave us Wi-Fi and GPS by an accident. So yeah, don't look at failures. Just, uh, you don't know what you may create by just trying, right? And successful people don't change their mind often. At the slightest failure, you already looking for a plan B. You already moving and, oh, no, 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 no. You stick to it. Okay, I failed here. Let me try again. But that doesn't mean for me to quit. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Lack of persistence is one of the major causes of failure. Weak desires bring weak results. What is having a team of people in place whose job is to help you succeed and carry out your plan? All this is is who you're surrounding yourself with, your friends. I just did a video recently, is your friends, your family, your circle stunting your growth, making you emotionally immature and in turn stopping your success. Go check that out. Who you have around you is very key no matter what plans. If you say, hey, I'm going to write a book, you know, 
make sure you have people in you that can support you with that too. Okay, not just the party friends, not just the party family, but who can help me execute this? Who can help me get to the right resources or give me the motivation or, you know, push me or who I can bounce ideas off, who could help me edit, like things like that. And then start trying to find those people. How do you find these people? A lot of authors spend time in bookstores, you know, find out in what industry you want to go to. Where do these people frequent? Where do they go? What do they do? What are their habits? And start applying some of those in you. If you want to be an author, you're not spending enough time in bookstores, darling. Go into bookstores, have conversations with people, you'd be surprised. A lot of authors go and get inspiration in bookstores. They'll find inspiration in artistic spaces. So go in those artistic spaces. I'm not saying if you want to be a doctor, go to a doctor's office and just sit in a hall the whole time. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying, you know? But this is what he means by specialized knowledge, going to conferences. Find conferences or seminars, etc., for aspiring doctors. Go to those events, meet those people, talk to them, find your niche, your people, and be where they are and follow what their habits are. That's it all aligns because now you're being a good follower. If you have people around you that does not align with the goals that you have constantly, yes, you can have friends in different varieties, you know, niches, etc. Like I said, it's good to have a lawyer friend, a doctor friend. It's good to have a nurse as a friend. It's good to have an engineer, an interior designer. Have a diversity of friends, okay? It's good to have those friends. If you have friends that have no aspirations, no goals, nothing, you're going to be like them. So focus on that also. I, I agree with a lot that he says where he talks about the sixth sense, which is the door to the temple of the wisdom, where he talks about a lot of people, their sixth sense is God. He calls it infinite intelligence, where the sixth sense basically like your intuition. It's like basically your intuition, how you communicate with God and an intelligence that you cannot get from men, but that you get from a higher power and from God. That's why I said in the beginning, put God first with every plan that you make, make sure it aligns with him and that he's guiding you because he, he basically talks about how in his sixth sense those spiritual forces that he talk about help him to get to where he's at too they they tap in like when you're in danger if you've ever been in a car accident and you know for for you it's like you call in the name of Jesus and then you swerve he basically saying the sixth sense can do what's supernatural and impossible and he does have a great philosophy in there where he talks about how some people would you know rather not believe that there's other forces out there or a higher power that helps you attain the success and where you want to be in life and how it's foolish and he makes great arguments on that from a scientific point i think it's phenomenal points that he made where i do believe in a higher power this was basically it for the book it's a very transformative book the audiobooks are here on youtube if you're interested check them out they have several audiobooks but it's very transformative it's very good it's very worthwhile and I think it's a book everybody should have in their library to read and it just it does make you a better person <laughs> most of the books we read on success here does that it makes you a better person or you know see through certain things like 48 laws but it was an amazing read and I just know you guys will enjoy it too if you've read it already comment below your thoughts what did you agree with that he said and what don't you agree with what are you going to apply into your life I love you guys so much thank you for tuning in if you like the music you're listening to the link is in the description love you guys so much until next time Mwah.